Hello, I'm George Hayes and today's tutorial is going to be about displaying a moving background or scrolling a background as far as uh, with the SDL 2.0 and we're using MingGW comp uh, IDE, uh, sorry compiler with the CodeBlocks IDE. All right. And so we're going to go ahead and jump in here and do this. As what you can see right now, this is basically what I'm talking about. It's just got simple two texture system and the car staying stationary and the background's moving. And it's how basically most of your you know, side scrollers work. So we're going to go ahead and jump in and take a look at that. All right. What I've got as far as for setup here is you have an includes directory that includes the SDL. All right, now you have a an image on it. Um, Game.h contains a class for the game. All right, and Boolean is for running, ensuring that the game's running. Window uh, as far as your window, your render, event handler, uh, screen width and height, display rectangle, your car texture, your car's rectangle, your background, background rectangle. One background rectangle, two, and a secondary display rectangle, which I probably should move up here, and scroll right and left boolean. So when we have an event, we can actually set those. All right, uh, game.h, which runs when the game is created, on which on execute. So when it actually runs, then then we call this and so on like that. So we'll jump in and take a look at them. So on game.cpp we have uh, the game, right, which runs Windows null, running true. So we set car background and car to null and running to true. All right, then we run on execute. All right, which is called when we do down here, all right, in the main. So the game, the main, right, the game on execute, which calls this. All right, which then obviously initializes it and so on like that. So, which is initialized from here. That's part. Anyway, we're jumping into on execute. We initialize, which creates our window, creates our render, and then we set our display rectangle to the size of the screen. Scroll right and left to zero. All right, which we could do that as far as in the other part of it, as far as up here on game so anyway uh, after then we go to load content which loads in the background image and the car texture and sets the rectangles as far as on them all right then we go into a game loop and clean up clean up is over here all it does is delete the car destroy the car texture background texture the render and window and quit all right so the loop we run through and do on loop on render after we pull through the event handler the event handler um, on event here it's pretty simple we have it when you click the X in the corner it closes uh, sets running to false alright to cause everything to close and shut down STL windows on event resize so when we resize the window we do a couple uh, checks we get the screen size height height and width we set the uh, display rectangle to that and then we sit there and adjust the car position because if we didn't the car wouldn't be in the same rough areas in comparison to the program so it's sort of close it moves a little up and down but you know, for now it's fine okay so that's what that does and jump out of that and then SDL key down for D and A, right? D to go right, A to go left. Uh, hit the escape button to quit running, just like hitting the X button up here. And then when you lift up, it sets the booleans back to zero instead of one, as far as I know. Okay, so, excuse me a sec. <coughs> On loop. Alright. Now, the. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I don't think this type of side scroller is the best type of side scroller. I think uh, ones that you do that are um, uses a stable background and moves independent objects over it to act as a background that's moving and so forth and you can layer and so forth like that is a better option and I'll probably do a secondary video on how to do that but I'm showing this because it's one that people want to use or have used and stuff like that and it's one of it's so so 
it's sort of simple, but I want to show the deficiencies in it and stuff. I don't, reason I don't like it here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and uh, black out some code or comment out some code in this case so you can actually see what the basic scroller looks like. without the corrections added in to compensate for it. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna rebuild. I'm gonna run. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and go to the right, and when I get over far enough, you start looking at this block here, and you'll start seeing something interesting. Notice the block's getting bigger as it's going to the left. Well, there's a reason for that, and what's going on is we're only showing a portion of this image at any particular time on the screen about 256 bits of it this image is 256 by 1024 so even if we made a really large image you would still end up with this effect on it because what's going on is as I'm moving that X position closer and closer to the end it means that this you know for example let's say the X is here at uh, 1024 uh, 1000 and it's like let's say a you know it's a 1024 image to here so you'd have this portion of the, this image being stretched out across the whole screen so once you pass that 256 mark from the end in this case of so what's you know this, this how that that's how much of this image is being stretched into the screen well then that what's left over from here to here is what's getting stretched out on the screen so then when we get let's say right here you have all this being stretched out when we get from here along this line, well, this portion is being stretched out on the whole screen. So it makes this object get stretched out further and further. Now, so we had to compensate for that type of thing. So what happens is you have to move this rear portion of the image to the left with it. All right. See, so because originally what you're doing is you're just moving the portion of the image that you're actually displaying on the rectangle. But then you have to move the rear portion of the image because you're not actually moving the image you're moving a portion of it all right or displaying a portion of it all right so let's get back out of this real quick all right so what we've done is we've come back into this area here and let's start out and okay so right here what we got done at this point is we're looking at that rear portion of that image all right and we're sit there and decided we're going to move that portion along with it all right now i guess line comment these well actually they ain't gonna hurt anything all right so that's what's going on here so we've calculated the proportion of the screen that's left as far as out of that texture that we need to move and then we're moving the rear image along with it and we're only setting it into the proportion of the screen that it needs to be displayed in all right so what's actually going to happen after that I'm going to go ahead and jump forward here what this is is we're displaying for a second portion of that image to be displayed in a second portion of the window so the screen for example let's say uh, as being um, go ahead and run it and maybe we can see real quick um, all right as you see here the screen only part of the image is being displayed here well we don't have anything displayed in this area here now so that has to be compensated for all right for it to come back around and stuff well that's what we're going to do as far as in the next part so that's what this little portion here does it calculates that portion of the window and this background that has to be moved into it so this first part calculates the proportion of the first window and what you know what's left to be displayed and so on all right then we jump down here this is all for basically looping it around all right so once it gets past the uh, you know 1024 part we're going to sit there and 
minus the 256 it, you know between it we're going to sit there and scroll it over to that side so then once it, if we exceed greater than 1024 we subtract 1024 from it if it's gr less than zero we add 1024 to it so it puts it back into this area to handle it as needed all right and if it's not inside here then we don't have to worry about it all right and this thing covers the rest of it all right so there's a little part we have to do as far as in the render well since we went through and dealt with the issue as far as with that 1024 to uh, minus 256 the portion of the screen that's you know being displayed right so if it's between here and here all right we want to display that second portion of the screen and so that's what this part does this up here displays the first part of the screen right as far as the background this displays the second part if it's between this all right if it's not between this then we only need the first part up here so we don't have to worry about that all right the car is always displayed it's sitting basically in the same place so now if we go ahead and rebuild this all right and tell you what we're going to rebuild it and leave this out so you can see what I'm talking about real quick all right so what you're going to get here is we're going to get this thing it's going to loop around but it's not displaying that portion of the screen that it should be here and it won't until this edge reaches all the way over to here and then it pops in and it, so as long as this X position is between you know t the 1024 minus 256 the portion is being displayed on the screen and the 1024 over here well this is going to move across but it won't it's only got that one portion of the screen being displayed which is the part of the first texture or area here which is there's only the one texture it's just only one part of it's being displayed so we need to display the secondary part as long as it's the X is from here to here as far as on the end of this thing so whatever your image is all right you know, see if you go back the other way it does the same thing you know it's just reversed so that's what the part here as far as in the additional render area is for if it's between there We've already calculated it as far as on that one part that I showed you right here for the two the image and the display portion of it to be done. And so that's what's getting displayed here. Alright, and the stuff just commented out is just where I was doing testing to make sure the values are correct and stuff like that. Alright, so run. And that's how you do that. Alright, so this part one and there are better ways in my opinion as far as doing this um, having a, a background that's technically not moving all right and then you could sit there and create objects like let's say the building here and you could have them move across all right behind the background and your stable background and if you need like stars and sky and stuff like that to move you could sit there and make individual stars and so forth and have it move across and it looks better as far as on the thing all the way around because you don't want to end up with a background that's where you're doing all this stuff to it because this limits you you have to have a um, one two three you can stream multiple images together to sit there and make a much longer scenery area but if you sit there and set up objects that you move as far as on it and stuff you could have virtually an endless length of background that you want to, that doesn't repeat you know too greatly and you know you could use a pseudo random generator to sit there and create your background if you want it but you know point is this is you know limited as far as what you can do as far as this way and it's also got those issues and you have to if you want to scroll around you got to do stuff like that and you get and once you get to the end of an image well you're going to have to also compensate as I showed you on that so anyway I hope you like this video and please subscribe and please like this that way at least I know I should keep making some more videos and if it's helpful great that lets me know too and Feel free to share it and point others to it. And thanks again for watching. Have a great day.